Now let's go uh, south into Mexico, because just south of Clifton Morenci, there was occurred a major battle involving a transnational corporation practicing a dual wage system. Only this time, the dual wage system favored American immigrant workers over Mexican citizens. In an isolated spot bordering southeastern Arizona and northeastern Sonora, during June of 1906, a strike is going to take place in the Mexican mining town of Cananea, Sonora. And since the late 19th century, the Nogales-based Cananea Consolidated Copper Company paid over 5,000 Mexican workers half the wages per day that over 2,000 American workers there were earning for the same job. So conditions in which the Mexican employees worked were deplorable. They likewise faced the racialization process, but this time in their home country. And during the celebration of Cinco de Mayo, the Mexican employees made public their complaints while the local authority applied martial law to avoid further conflicts. So striking workers in Cananea confronted U.S. soldiers protecting the company store. So we're going to return to the documentary in Los Mineros. And we're going to witness an effort to end the dual wage system in Cananea, Mexico, under the Porfirio Diaz regime. Now let's appreciate this one man uh, that, uh, was, that was part of uh, instrumental in the 1903 Clifton Morenci strike. His name is Abram Salcido. Uh, you might remember him because that was, uh, there was a song uh, attributed to him. Now, one of the reasons Mexicans sing corridos is to honor those who help us remember moments of resistance against oppression. Corridos retell the story of what was once lived in the Mexican experience. Corridos are like ballads. They're working-class historical memoirs. Remember, uh, the Mexican community did not have a middle class in the United States, an educated class that would write their histories. So the communities remembered their histories through song, hence the corrido. Corridos are popular cultural expressions recounting struggles to achieve justice against institutionalized racism. How else can one make sense of the Cananea strike in 1906 if it isn't the corrido of Abraham Salcido? Now, one of the things that's important is after three years in an Arizona prison for the Clifton Morenci strike of 1903, Abraham Salcido will move directly down to uh, um, um, I'm sorry, I just got I just drew a blank uh, to the Cananea, and he will found the organizational struggle of Mexican workers in what will be known as the 1906 Cananea strike. Okay, let's go to um, the film clip. 40 miles south of the U.S. border was a mining empire in Cananea, Mexico. An American, Colonel William Green, owned the Cananea Copper Company. Mexican President Porfirio Diaz had enticed foreign industrialists to take advantage of Mexico's rich natural resources. By 1906, Cananea looked more like a company town in Arizona than a Mexican pueblo. The town's most prominent structure was not the Catholic Church, but Colonel Green's two-story clapboard mansion. The Mineros suffered the same conditions as their countrymen north of the border. They endured segregated housing, lack of promotion, and even in Mexico, a dual wage system. The Americans were paid three, the number three, in dollars and the Mexicans were paid three pesos. The rate of exchange was two to one, so automatically Americans for the same type of work got paid twice as much. Outraged by this oppressive treatment of their fellow countrymen, Mexican intellectuals and political activists began to organize. Cananea became a symbol of foreign tyranny. Senores Mineros, teach the American you are not beast of burden. The American who has displaced us with his legion of blue-eyed blondes, Esteban Calderon. My father was a baker, he owned a bakery in Cananea, but yet he was one of those liberal types, and I guess he liked to play politics. 
he would sympathize with the miners or the conditions that they, that they were subject. So over here, there was a little place called Ori Plata, where they used to plan their strategies. Abraham Salcido was released from prison in Arizona in the spring of 1906. He went directly to Cananea to join the labor organizers working in the mines. On June 2nd, that same year, the Mineros went out on strike. They gathered to present their demands to company officials. Colonel Green personally came out and talked to the miners and told them that he wanted to raise their salaries but that the president of Mexico wouldn't allow it, that he was asking them as a friend to go back to work. The strikers refused. Dressed in their Sunday best, they marched through the camp to gather supporters. Over 2,500 arrived at the company's lumber yard, run by two Americans, George and Will Metcalf. George had been warned the strikers were coming. The first thing that the two Metcalf brothers did inside of the lumber yard was to turn on the, the hoses that they had in case of a fire, and they trained it on the crowd. This infuriated the miners, so they forced the doors open the two Metcalf brothers shot, apparently first into the air and then directly into the crowd, killing two or three of the miners. The miners set fire to the office of the lumber yard to smoke the two Metcalf brothers out. They came out still shooting and the miners killed them both. One of them was apparently killed with his own rifle and the other one was uh, uh, clubbed to death and stuck to death with miners' candlesticks that they were still carrying during the, during the march that they had. Once they had killed the two Metcalf brothers, the miners were met by a group of about 30 armed Americans headed by Green and the shooting began again. By four o'clock that afternoon, Mexican troops arrived to put down the strike. They were joined by 270 Arizona Rangers who had been armed at the Phelps Dodge Mercantile store. The Rangers had violated Mexican law in crossing the border with arms. To avoid an international incident, they were hastily deputized by the Mexican state governor. By the next day, the strike had been put down. Once again, Abraham Salcido and the other strike leaders were jailed for inciting a riot. My father was arrested and sent to, to prison. They never could prove anything. So he came to the United States and he says, I've had enough of all that thing in Mexico. 23 people lost their lives at Tananea. 17 of them Mexican. The strike had failed. None of the strikers' demands was met. But the Cananea strike would give birth to the first major revolution of the 20th century, the Mexican Revolution. In the end, Porfirio Diaz would be in exile and one million of his countrymen would lay dead. The violence of the Mexican Revolution would have a lasting impact on the border region. Volatile racial tensions were inflamed. Arizonans feared the bloodshed would spill over the border. Okay, so here we uh, understand uh, this particular um, commitment to justice, not only to political democracy, but also economic democracy and social equality. Abraham Salcedo was a socialist organizer. He challenged truth to power. He put his life on the line for something larger than himself. Now, although the workers were forced to return to their positions with no demands being met, the action was a key event in the general unrest that emerged during the final years of the regime of Porfirio Diaz and that prefigured the Mexican Revolution of 1910. So kind of uh, you know, figure this out. Again, again, the racism of Arizona 
as expressed by those armed rangers. They crossed the border into Mexico to attack Mexicans. Now, how go figure that? Go figure how the Mexican government is going to deputize them. Now, if you can, then, then you're going to begin to recognize something about the chaos that led to the Mexican Revolution.